What's up, everyone? Oh, Another day on Earth here. I am in beautiful, sunny Costa Rica, feeling grateful to be back. And I just felt like making a video to talk a bit about ayahuasca. Now, if you're unfamiliar, ayahuasca is a plant medicine, a psychedelic plant medicine that originated in the Amazon basin. And we don't know the exact origins of ayahuasca. Um, it originated sometime at least a few hundred years ago, if not a few thousand. And according to indigenous mythology, it was actually the jungle spirits that informed the indigenous people of the recipe for ayahuasca, which <clears throat> uh, involves two particular plants from the the Amazon. I think it's the ch chacruna plant and the, uh, I could not pronounce this, the B. Capisterosis vine or something. I totally butchered that, I'm sure. But when you consider the remarkable complexity of the ayahuasca brewing process, which is quite an involved labor that happens over the course of um, many hours or even days, uh, it does actually seem quite, it would seem quite uh, incredible if the native people had just completely stumbled upon this recipe themselves. So I'm actually open to the idea that the indigenous people were connected to the jungle, connected to nature on a profound level that we can scarcely fathom as modern people. Imagine just living immersed in the jungle, in silence and stillness and, and, and being connected to everything's visceral life and energy you would just be just so much more tuned in, so much more dialed in that if there are ways that the <clears throat> the plant world or the spirit world or the Gaian intelligence of the earth is endeavoring to communicate with us, you would be much more well equipped to receive those messages uh, living the sort of life that indigenous people in the Amazon were living. So anyway, to get into what I want to talk about, Ayahuasca, and I, I find that mythology fascinating, I have come to view ayahuasca as something along the lines of a literal magic potion. You know, as kids, we're told stories about uh, witches and wizards and magic potions, and in Western culture, we're taught that this is all just fantasy and make-believe and that uh, magic potions, you know, don't really exist. But my experiences with ayahuasca, honestly, if there were, if there were, <laughs> if, if I tried to conceive of something that would be deserving of the term magic, it would be difficult to imagine something more deserving of the term magic than um, the experiences that I have seen ayahuasca occasion both in myself and in others. Um, when you drink ayahuasca, and of course everyone's experience is different, but for me, when I drink ayahuasca, <clears throat> there's a sense of coming in contact with some kind of extraordinarily vast intelligence. A sense of coming in contact with an intelligence that understands me and understands this reality on a level that is profoundly deeper than... than... I could previously fathom, profoundly deeper deeper than the conscious, intellectual, rational monkey mind could ever fathom. It's a, it's like a profound knowingness uh, that one comes in contact with, and one has the sense that this, this intelligence is meeting one, and, and, and it feels as if it's a a benevolent, loving intelligence that is meeting one and greeting one and welcoming one to this sacred process in which the intelligence seems to scan you. It seems to kind of scan you. You almost feel, you drink ayahuasca and you feel it kind of coursing through your body. You feel it uh, in all, you can feel it kind of pulsating in all parts of your body. 
and it feels as if it's kind of scanning you and learning you and or remembering you and and seeing your particular energetic signature at that moment and your particular blockages and then it's determining a series of visions and reveries that it's going to guide you through that are going to allow you to rapidly uh, let go of a whole lot that is not serving you, a whole lot of stuff that you may not even realize is there that's bogging you down, weighing you down, and holding you back in life. It's going to help you let go of a lot of that and then also give you a lot of clarity about the future and realizations that are going to catalyze the next stages of your kind of personal evolution. And often it uh, literally kind of gives you homework and you see a lot of visions of things that you should start doing after ayahuasca and and a huge part of the process is actually acting on these lessons and, and integrating what you see and what you learn. That's arguably the most important part. It's It's not about just drinking ayahuasca every weekend often you know people go months or years between ceremonies because they've been given so much to look at and so much to integrate and the true work I think lies in actually taking these lessons and incorporating them in our day-to-day -day lives um, and learning how to be kinder to ourselves take better care of ourselves be gentler to ourselves and thereby learn how to be kinder to the world around us and how to kind of collaborate with all that is and flow with all that is in the direction of kind of the upliftment of everyone and everything and for the the highest good of all beings just learning how to be what we are be ourselves on such a deep level that we actually kind of get out of our own way and allow the unfathomable infinite power and love and creativity of nature to just flow through us and animate us in a way that is more harmonious and graceful and beautiful than we could possibly uh, summon if we were to try to consciously intellectually make all these decisions ourselves and, and uh, control our lives um, the psychedelic processes fundamentally massively a process of relinquishing control of learning how to let go and let flow let go and let God and realizing when you do that that it's actually okay to let go and that you can actually trust the cosmos you can trust your soul you can trust whatever forces are kind of kind of flowing through you and guiding you in this uh, in this reality and People often remark that ayahuasca, a single ayahuasca ceremony, which lasts maybe uh, five or six hours, can be akin to 10 years of psychotherapy, like really good psychotherapy, because you're just, you're able to let go of so much, and, and meanwhile, you also are, I'll get to that in a moment, but you're, let, you're able to let go of so much that the next day people's eyes are sparkling with what seems to be the radiance of childhood having returned people often look about 10 years younger and there's this afterglow that comes from having let go of all this stuff that isn't serving you and really severed the the weight of the past that was bogging you down and and yeah it it, it can really feel like such a profound transformation, such a deep, sacred kind of reset button for your whole system that it can almost feel like a, a rebirth experience. It's really, it's really quite a rite of passage. And I should also, so as not to over romanticize it, I should also remark that it, it can be one of the most difficult, challenging processes you'll ever go through. I, when I'm in ayahuasca ceremonies, I almost have a feeling like I'm in the presence of a whole bunch of people like giving birth like going into labor because people are going into processes you're hearing people sigh and uh, and moan and 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 sob or laugh and 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 purge and and release and and belch and all this stuff and it's it's a very earthy very like primal down in the down in the 
the mud kind of human experience where you really see that damn we are really all human here we've really all got our stuff to deal with and we're all here together to do this work to invest in ourselves to let go of what is not serving us and that's ends up being a profoundly beautiful thing but it can be it 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 can be an extraordinarily difficult and challenging experience so i should be sure to state that but of course there can also just be incredibly luminous and numinous aspects of the experience the the visionary component where you're you're sucked into these visions this is one of the most magical most enchanted aspects of this potion cuz a lot of it can be going into past memories and past experiences and relationships and so that stuff can come up to be felt and dissolved but then there can also be i mean i've seen uh a lot of visions of different types of jungle animals you can actually feel as if you're becoming as if you temporarily become uh a di- different types of jungle animals and experience life as them I felt like I was being shown kind of the innate eco intelligence of the biosphere and of ecosystems and how plants are in a certain sense just remarkably intelligent and almost enlightened in the way that they simply grow themselves and grow in perfect harmonious accordance with um all that is and with kind of the way of things and how the remarkable complexity of how all these forms of life intertwine um collaboratively and synchronistically and and um what's the word i'm looking for uh mm can't think of it but it's like a mutually beneficial um relationship and seeing that and seeing you can also feel as if uh to be quite frank you can feel as if you're entering some other type of of dimension or spirit world that is um that is coincident with the material world that is it's around us all the time but typically out of our common perception but uh you're drawn so deep within yourself it can it can feel a bit like a dream state but you know it's it also has this character of being clearly distinct from a dream it's more like a reverie and you have a feeling a deep sense of knowingness of that there's a certain definite reality to what you're seeing and you can see yeah various types of beings and entities and beings of light uh, you can be shown uh celestial cities um it can seem as if you're you've been brought to another planet or a glimmering city uh in another dimension and i think it's important for me with these experiences that i don't become dogmatic about them and and say this is the truth i definitely know the truth of this cosmos this stuff is real um i don't feel a need to intellectually dogmatize my experiences but having these experiences really changes something in you you it sinks into your heart and bones on a level where you just know that i mean honestly the distinction between something happening out there versus happening all in your head kind of melts away you begin to see that this is um kind of kind of a strange almost fallacious uh dichotomy like a potentially a philosophical fallacy and you realize that all experience both internal and external is valid and is completely part of your experience of this reality so you begin to see that dreams have their own reality and significance and after having these experiences of seeing you know radiant luminous uh vistas and celestial cities and seeing uh benevolent uh plant spirits or beings of light visit you and uh assist you in kind of transmuting and letting go of what is not serving you i mean that's an experience that simply uh <laughs> it changes you forever it really does it's uh it's it's a remarkably luminous and and beautiful kind of gift to receive 
uh, in my estimation. And having now personally witnessed about 125 people or so drink ayahuasca and have these experiences and having not seen a single person um, have like a an experience they said they regretted or they just wish they hadn't they hadn't drank and having seen so many people just have utterly transformational and healing and liberating experiences this has led me to uh, feel very deeply that ayahuasca is kind of a sacred gift from from the biosphere it's 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 a sacred healing gift on this earth and in the present moment, in this time of enormous transition that we're in with accelerating technological change and living in the strangely isolating modern world, there are so many people who have so much suppressed and stuck gunk and energy that ayahuasca could help them process. I really believe that ayahuasca is bringing a lot of the healing that is presently needed in um, the kind of uh, Western monoculture that's kind of swept the world. And there, and that's why I think ayahuasca is spreading so virally underground and, and above ground. Increasingly, there are more and more places where ayahuasca can be, can be drank legally in Peru and Brazil. And it's, um, it's being drank legally in, uh, religious contexts in the United States. It's, uh, basically de facto legal in Costa Rica and yeah it's 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 spread throughout the United States and throughout Europe and it's it's spreading across the world because more and more people are realizing that it brings in a rapid and reliable way a level of profound healing that is extraordinarily difficult to find anywhere else and and vastly vastly more effective than so many uh, of the of the uh, methods that people are employing to try to deal with their pain and depression, you know, people are getting on these uh, prescription pills, which you know they may have their place, but um, in general, a lot of these pills just kind of numb people out. They don't address the root cause; they just kind of numb you out and allow you to be okay. You just kind of feel more monotone and and numb as you suppress the stuff that you you never actually deal with and then you end up needing you you're dependent on this prescription for years or for the rest of your life um, ayahuasca presents a potentially extraordinarily promising alternative to that reality and thus more and more people are are coming to realize just how uh, powerful it is and how powerful it can be so yeah I think I'll wrap up there for those reasons I really have come to see ayahuasca as a literal magic potion. I'm extraordinarily thankful for it. Thank you, ayahuasca. Thank you, earth. Thank you to all that is for allowing all of this to occur. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching this video. Much love to you. Take it easy. Take care. Keep it moving. <laughs> Much love, my friends.